Elon Musk claiming last night that the reason OpenAI exists after a $50 million investment, but he was also vocal about the issue he now has with that company. And Deirdre Bosa is digging into that a little bit this morning on Tech Check. Hey, Dean. Hey, guys, lots to peel from that interview last night, which you guys have been doing all morning. And what stood out to some in the tech world were his comments on Microsoft and OpenAI. I do worry that uh, Microsoft actually may be more in control than, say, the leadership team at OpenAI realizes. Um, I mean, Microsoft, ha as part of the Microsoft's investment, they have uh, rights to all of the software, all of the model weights, and everything necessary to run the inference system. Satya Nadella responded to CNBC saying that's factually not correct, noting that Microsoft has a non-controlling interest, but that unusual deal structure behind the $10 billion investment essentially allowed Microsoft to bypass an antitrust review process, also receive a large profit share and an exclusive license, and a powerful engine, of course, to go head-to-head -head with Google, which had the lead in generative AI, which brings up this decade-old question in tech, will the big players ultimately eat the lunch of the incumbents? We've seen it time and time again. One venture capitalist put it this way to me this morning. He said the problem with the space is that it's really expensive to play. You could build a website back in the 90s pretty easily and just play, but you can't really do that in this space unless you have billions of dollars, at least not until costs come all the way down. And he's referring guys to cloud or computing costs to run generative AI models like ChatGPT and BARD, which are very, very expensive. That, guys, may ultimately be what powers the next leg of this big tech rally. The S&P's 7% gain this year has been driven by eight stocks Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Meta, Amazon, Google, Tesla, and AMD. Those are not strictly AI companies, but they are definitely in the conversation. No, the AI, the AI saves the market has been, the, has been one of the themes here. Deirdre, you got me thinking about who, who owns these companies, who runs these companies, and, and just whether there should be more scrutiny on that or, or if it's ultimately the data inputs, because at some point something's going to go wrong with AI, right? We, we've been hearing all the warnings. And, and then what? Who, who do we blame? Who do we turn to? You're touching on a key debate in the space right now, which is open source versus closed source. And there is this thinking that if government entities, if sensitive information that is held by companies are going to be run through these generative models, it better be an open source system because they have to protect it. If you have a closed source system from, say, Microsoft or Google, they could have access to that information. So this is going to be negotiated. Open AI, despite its name, is closed source and said that they would look at being open source. But there's other models out there from other younger companies, incumbents, that are trying to be open source. And again, when you get back to that question, though, do they have the money to actually run these models because it takes so much in terms of computing power and chips. Um, so that'll be a key question. I mean, how can you make it possible to be open sourced if that's what's going to protect privacy best if it requires, you know, billions of dollars in cloud computing? Dee, thanks for that. Uh, a conversation we're going to have a lot more of uh, regarding AI. Deirdre Bosa today. Thanks.